All right, now we're to this awesome subject. How in the world do I know if a reaction is going to be E1, E2, SN1, or SN2? <laughs> I'm totally going to answer that. However, in order to make sure that I don't get absolutely vilified by all of my colleagues who are specialists in the world of organic chemistry, I have to give you guys this disclaimer. The sad fact is that in reality, many reactions will do both elimination and substitution competitively. For example, if I've got a simple material like this, leaving group stuck to a secondary carbon, it could potentially do E1, E2, SN1, or SN2, depending on what I react it with. If, for instance, I react it with a very strong base, methoxide, that has a localized negative charge on this oxygen, that methoxide might potentially come in here, form a bond with this carbon, and kick off the bromide, giving me this product. This would be an SN2 reaction. Now, as we discussed in our previous chapter's coverage of SN2s, because this methoxide has to come in from the back side of this bromine, you get inverted stereochemistry. Thus, if this carbon-bromine bond were wedged in the starting material, the carbon-oxygen bond would be dashed in the product. Now, in contrast, you could take the exact same molecule, and you could imagine taking the exact same base, methoxide, and rather than having it form a bond with the carbon that's stuck to the leaving group, it could potentially grab the hydrogen on the carbon next door, pump these electrons down to close, giving you a double bond, and kick off the bromide. This would give us potentially two different products, the trans, or E product, and the cis, or Z product. The trans, of course, would be the more favorable in this scenario. This would be an E2 reaction. I'm throwing this out at you guys so that you can recognize that, on paper at least, and often in reality, you're going to get both E2s and SN2s occurring in some circumstances. Now, similar things might occur under SN1E1 conditions. For example, I can take this same molecule we were looking at before, leaving groups stuck to a secondary carbon, and start in the presence of a weak base, methanol, which has no negative charge on the oxygen. It just has lone pairs and a partial negative on the oxygen. As that's stirred in solution, the bromine takes off, giving me a secondary carbocation. And then you could imagine this methanol coming into that hole and the oxygen forming a bond with that carbon. This would be SN1 style. Of course, this oxygen is going to bring this hydrogen along with it, being temporarily positively charged until a second molecule of methanol can come and extract that hydrogen, pump the electrons into that oxygen to give me my final product. As we discussed in our previous chapter's coverage of substitution, this reaction scenario is going to give us both an antimers rather than a complete inversion of stereochemistry as we would see in an SN2 scenario. Now I want you to contrast that with this. I could potentially react the exact same molecule with the exact same base, methanol. And imagine that stirring around until the bromine leaves, giving me a secondary carbocation. And I could imagine the methanol, instead of coming down and forming a bond with that positively charged carbon, grabbing the hydrogen next door and pumping these electrons down like a door on a hinge to close, giving me these alkene products. The transalkene will, of course, be more favorable in this scenario because it's more stable. This is an E1 reaction. So on paper, this weak base, methanol, could potentially do both of these two reactions, and in reality, probably does. So as a typical organic chemistry student at an undergraduate level, you might be wondering, well, what in the world am I supposed to do, Mike? How in the world can I pick which of all of these different scenarios is going to play out? Well, don't worry. I'm going to give you the answer. I want to qualify my answer by once again emphasizing the fact that the answer I'm going to give you will give you a clean cut, nice system for being able to determine which of these reactions it's going to be. However, I want you to understand that in reality, both elimination and substitution can sometimes occur competitively depending on the scenario.